the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit on this last Sunday of our Advent season. So much good has taken place in the parishes under my care. We have gone through a parish mission with Father Tom McCarthy. We've had Bishop Ronald Hicks celebrating St. Anne's 150th anniversary of the dedication of their building. Bishop Hicks witnessing the rapid growth of the Hispanic community at St. Patrick's Church. We've had all kinds of wonderful festivities which are going to lead to our Las Posadas celebration tonight, our Our Lady of Guadalupe celebration last week, and our Christmas season which begins the following weekend. As we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Santo Dios, Santo Poderoso, Santo Immortal, ten piedad de nosotros. Christe eleison, Christe eleison. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may his passion and cross be brought to the glory of the resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or as high as the sky. Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David. Is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you the sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. The Lord's are the earth in his fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it among the rivers. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior, such as the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face, of the God of Jacob. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The gospel about his son descended from David according to the flesh, but established as the Son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness through resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom are you also who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear you a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In my 26 years as a Catholic priest, the one theme of hope that I have in this ministry is based on the fact that I am going to lose. We are going to lose because eventually we're going to lose these buildings. We're going to lose all these wonderful structures we have. And all these things will go away as the scriptures have told us. We are going to lose because society is much more cunning, is much more powerful, and is much more industrious than sometimes the just people can be. We're going to lose because sometimes we live sinful lives and we forget about our purpose in life to love God and love our neighbor. What I have learned is that so many better people, far better people than I ever could be, have lost, but because they lost, they actually won. I keep going back to people like Isaiah and Micah and Hosea and Amos. They warned the chosen people about straightening out their act or they would lose their land. The people didn't listen. The Northern Kingdom was lost in 722 BC. The Southern Kingdom was lost in 586 BC. Jeremiah warned the people that the destruction was imminent. They wanted to kill Jeremiah. They wanted to toss Jeremiah out. King Nebuchadnezzar ended up sticking Jeremiah in the middle of the city to watch it burn. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, adopted by Saint Joseph so he could be part of the lineage of David, is the new king lost in front of the Sanhedrin and was nailed to a cross. The apostles that followed Jesus, who took that message to the ends of the earth, 11 of the 12 of them died a martyr's death. We've talked about the popes prior to 313 AD. The great majority of them died a martyr's death. Scores of good Catholics who have lived the Catholic faith and wanted to pursue this life of love were martyred for the cause of the faith. I am not as nearly as important as they are. I am not nearly as strong as they are. But I must learn from them that they lost, but because of them, the church has won. The grain of seed that falls to the ground and dies is no longer a grain of wheat. It produces much fruit. All of those who have given their lives for the cause of the faith, for the protection of children, for the protection of the vulnerable, for those in need, Damian Bolakai, who contracted the same disease that he was trying to minister. We have so many different individuals who have given their life for the cause of the faith, have lost their lives in the process, but yet are remembered because of their perseverance, because of their dedication to the faith. Peter was crucified upside down. Paul was beheaded. We learn that these individuals were willing to give their lives for the cause of Christ, as I need to give my life to you. 
over the last three years, because of the sacrifice, our community in the Hispanic faith has grown from zero to 200 souls every Sunday. At St. Anne's, prior to my arrival, we had no baptisms in five years. We had no weddings in 10 years. Now, all of a sudden, we have baptisms and quinceañeras and weddings. I had another 14-year-old Hispanic lady asking if she could receive the sacraments at the Easter Vigil so that she could receive her quinceañera. We've had so many individuals that have come forward. 26 people will be receiving sacraments on Easter weekend because we have made an effort to sacrifice our lives for them. Will all of them be appreciative? Probably not. Ten lepers were healed. One came back. You don't do it for them. You do it for God. Because if God sets the example, we must follow it. Look at the first reading. Ahaz was a corrupt king. Most of the kings during the time of the kings were corrupt, as were most of the judges. That's why we needed the new king with a new perspective on what Jerusalem is all about. Jesus came into the world not to restore the city in Israel that has been fought over by Jews, Christians, and Muslims for hundreds and thousands of years. Rather, Jesus, this Emmanuel, this God with us, this new King David, is pointing us to a different Jerusalem, the one that is eternal in heaven. If we have the faith and the hope and the love, if we can understand sacrifice and mercy, but in this particular case, the word is hope. If we live the life today, the hope is for an eternal light tomorrow, an eternal light that will never be extinguished because we did what God asked us to do. Eventually, good and bad will be eradicated from this earth. God will sift through the wheat and the chaff. He will separate the sheep and the goats. If we do this right, we are going to lose because the cunning are usually a whole lot more industrious than we are. But if we live a life of love, we win with God and we're with God the rest of our existence. Please know I'll continue to do what I can to help you out. Please do the same for those around you, for the parishes that serve you, for the people that love you, and for all people that we meet. This is our prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Committed to allowing this light of Christ to guide us and lead us, let us take a moment to offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. We pray that the leaders of the church may realize that this light of Christ, this new King David, is to lead us to the new Jerusalem and they should act accordingly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have lost their lives, have sacrificed for the gospel message, that may God may give them their reward. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for children, especially the most vulnerable, in the womb and outside, that we may be dedicated to protect them and that God be with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the parishioners of St. Patrick's and St. Anne who prepare for the Christmas feast day that they may always be led by that star of hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that they may feel God's comfort in the hands of their caregivers, especially those on our parish's sick list. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may be welcomed by God in his heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers offered this last week, that they and their families may be embraced by God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, continue to lead us and guide us by that wonderful light of the star. May we be led to this new Jerusalem where we will find our eternal peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me, cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling, John the Baptist sang of his coming, and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et terra, gloria tua, hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui verit in nomine domini, hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying... Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, Mortem Tuam Annunciamus Domine, Et Tuam Resurrectionem Confitebur, Donec Venias. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, St. Patrick, St. Anne, and all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you, if they're passing from this life, give kind admits to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Pater noster qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, ad veniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra, panam nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitibus debitoribus nostris, Et ne nos inducas in tentacionem, sed libera nos a malo. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to eternal life.
let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever near, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So because of the good work of Joe Cohn working on our bathroom project with Joe Krause over in our gymnasium, Van Druden Farms, our wonderful anonymous donors, things of that nature, all of a sudden Joe has inspired others in the parish to pick up the baton and continue the gym project with the renovation of a kitchenette, a warming kitchen, for our parish gym. Lots of people have been coming forward to offer their services. Very much blessed with all those who have written cards to the homebound, to those who are in need, our kids in religious education sending care packages, all the folks taking care of our angel tree sending gifts to those who are in need, sending gifts to our veterans home and our El Centro de la Seca in Joliet, Illinois. Lots of good has come from these parishes, and it's all because of you. Once again, we really just want to take care of what we have, to be good stewards of what we have. As we've discussed over and over again, we want to offer these parishes as a gift to the next generation. Look, I know we're going to lose. I know eventually these buildings are going down somewhere in the future, hopefully not in the near future. But if we do our part and show God we care, $25 for a book dedication, $100 brick dedication, $2,500 pew dedication. One of our parishioners gave us a pew dedication, which took care of so many different projects that we had from our parish mission to our brass quintet to the repairs of some of our statues. Lots of good stuff. I know $220,000 is a huge number. But we have people that can help us if they so choose, if they are willing to make this sacrifice for the people of these communities. One million dollars takes care of a building in honor of some loved one in our community. If you can help in any way, even if you could just pick up a rosary and pray for the needy, whatever you can do and word it and work, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. The disposition always has to be love. Please know I'll do what I can to help you out, which we are going to do at our Christmas Masses the following weekend. I am going to celebrate all the Christmas Masses over in my house in front of my Christmas tree with our makeshift altar. We are going to have Christmas and Holy Family and Solemnity of Mary and Epiphany. We'll do this all for you because those of you who can't join us in church certainly have asked us to continue doing this online which we are honored and blessed to do. Just please remember that at Christmas time, we only have one collection that weekend. We're going to lose a collection because Christmas falls on a Sunday. We need to pay the bills and we need to take care of our own uh, parishes. Do what you can to help out. Just pray for us, take care of us. Please know I'll do the same for you in whatever way I can. Please call us if you have any needs prior to Christmas Day or during Christmas week if you want. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. I invite you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Be merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessings. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, descend on you and remain with you forever. Amen. This Mass has ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God and Merry Christmas, everybody.
them tight. Shepherds were keeping watch into the night. Then in a stirring of clouds in the sky, voices were singing from heaven on high. Heeding the call, shepherds arose, seeking the infant in swaddling clothes. All were amazed and exalting above. Angels were singing, give honor and glory to God. Men were seeking the new Prince of Peace, placing their trust on a star in the sky, leading to Bethlehem where the King lie. There rests a child under the light. All of the wise men beheld the great sight, offering gifts more than one could behold. Wise men gave homage beyond what has ever been told. Santa goes one, two, three, four. March the Santa soldier bears. One, two, three, four. March the polar bears. One, two, three, four. Heading off where no one dares. One, two, three, four. March the polar bears. There's the polar brothers who flank the captain's side. One will march a little fast and one is way behind. Half the time they're working and half the time they doze. The time they lose their mind and wonder where it goes. One, two, three, four, watch the Santa soldier bears. One, two, three, four, watch the polar bears. One, two, three, four, heading off where no one dares. One, two, three, four, watch the polar bears.
junior soldier bear, the youngest of the crew. He keeps the boys all straight in line when they don't know what to do. And when the boys are sleeping and no one is around, he calls on the candy cane brigade to keep them safe and sound. One, two, three, four, march the Santa soldier bears. One, two, three, four, march the polar bears. One, two, three, four, heading off where no one dares. One, two, three, four, march the polar bears. The captain leads the polar cold, the junior at his side. You hear the beat of soldier feet when Santa goes off for a ride. And when old Santa takes his sleigh to fly the world around, the polar brigade will clear the way to get the sleigh off the ground. One, two, three, four, march the Santa soldier bears. One, two, three, four, march the polar bears. One, two, three, four, heading off where no one dares. One, two, three, four, march the polar bears. One, two, three, four, march the Santa soldier bears. One, two, three, four, march the polar bears. One, two, three, four, heading off where no one dares. One, two, three, four, march the polar bears. Watch the polar bears.